Hey, what's going on YouTube? This is Chaos Rain here. Once again, I'm here to bring you a video about an ice shot build. This build was requested by another sub a little while ago, but I've been too busy in League and I haven't been uh, wanting to remake it just yet. But this build, instead of kind of, you know, showcasing it, I'm going to basically show you a ground up view of what it takes to build it, every little piece at a time, and every gym link, everything like that. So I hope you do enjoy it. Without further ado, this is my MF iShot build that you saw in a previous video, basically soloing Drox. <coughs> Now in this video I will be basically putting on all the gear pieces with no sockets and then socketing I'm explaining my reasoning for the sockets that I have and the reasoning I have the gym set up the way I have it set up. I do have a lot of uh, explaining to do so j you're in for a little bit of a ride and I do hope that you stick around to the end so you can see the showcase. Alright, so let's start. First things first, let's put on the gear that we can put on, which is potions. Alright, good, good. Then let's put on our clusters, starting with our voices, seven passives. We're doing a seven passives because it is the cheapest one and easiest one to acquire. Oh, I was going to actually show you what you're going to look for on those, so let me... <coughs> I only have one one of them that's actually rolled and finished. No, I have two of them that's rolled and finished. And the other one I was going to roll for you, so you can kind of see what you're looking for. Now we are using two Dexterity, Intelligence, Split Personalities. If you see, we put one in, we're at 164. 164 doesn't give us enough. Let me uh, actually put all these on. Alright. Oh, 164 does give us enough. Yeah. <coughs> so I believe I have to use a Dex Strength, which is fine. Or Dex Life, Dex Strength or Dex Life, if, if you want it. And you're using the others, but basically as a um, stat, a stat boost. Uh, the stat boost helps not only you to equip your gear, but it also helps you. See, sorry, I had to take care of something. It also helps you to just kind of. Uh, <coughs> let's see, Dex Accuracy. Let me let me let me find it. Dex Life. All right, cool. Actually, I might need Dex Strength for this. I need 96 strength, I'm at 94. I would need only 2 strength. I'm just not going to use the Empower then. Alright, well, we just won't use Empower, but we will use the Dex Life Split, and the Dex Life... Get, the Dex gives you damage for your Heries, which is just a little bit of extra added. You need all the added that you can get if you're doing MFI Shot, because the Wind Ripper does not do a whole lot of damage. And for our clear, we're doing Ice Shot, Cold Penetration, added Cold Damage, Elemental Damage with Attacks, Inspiration Support, Chain, actually forgot that one of the gems with a single target, but I'll show you right now, Ice Shot, Cold Penetration, Elemental damage with attacks, inspiration, added cold. For our auras slash herald, herald of ice. And because we are using our amulet, which is the replica Heri's truth, precision, our replica Heri's truth is anointed with whispers of doom, so we can apply three curses total with our setup. We apply three curses because this one also gives you an additional curse. <coughs> Sorry, this is actually a little bit different. Herald of Ice goes in here, along with Awaken Hex Touch, Frostbite, 
elemental weakness. We have an ensnaring arrow that we switch out between here and here for a single target. If we feel uh, ensnaring arrow is also good to have in general. If you don't feel like switching it, you can just use it and it makes it so bosses take more damage. Our helmet has a blood rage in it, hydrosphere in it, sniper's mark in it for our third curse slash mark. Our lynx is dash second wind. We have two inspired learnings, so we can take full advantage of not using a headhunter. As you can see, we are using one watcher's eye. The watcher's eye is there for, long story short, base crit from hatred. You need to get a get as high of crit as you can. This is actually not where it goes though. For now, we're just gonna do this, put it there. All right. Then we will, now we will uh, show you how easy it is to roll these clusters. I'm going to pull out one alchemy and let's just pull out a little bit of chaos. <coughs> and we're done. Uh, quick getaway is a very strong one and basics of pain gives you a little more damage and crit chance you can also go crit chance double damage if you want but the ideal thing is you want two things that add crit chance or two things that add crit multi either one of the combinations is fine now we are skill uh, skill pointed out we are a little missing a little bit of lightning and cold res but this is just basically th uh, thrown together so you can kind of see what I'm doing now I will say that that is easily made up if you have well I guess I was gonna say if you have resistance callus but that didn't matter all right so we have uh, our MF built let's uh, let's get a corrupted blood jewel from our tab here it looks like we can actually use our empower now so since we can use our empower we'll put it in here let's go to our gym our jewel tab Corrupted blood. And we'll pick up that one. This is a life crit multi or chaos res crit multi add cold add lightning. And there's our corrupted blood. Alright, now we can find our last gem, which is barrage support. And we are done with our single target. And now I will go over a explanation on why I chose the gems I chose. Let me uh, quickly fix this real quick. Cool, cool. We're all good to go. We have all of our g our uh, gems and sockets and everything like that, so <coughs> so we don't have too much to worry about. <coughs> our crit chance is a respectable 60% with 351 crit multi. On both eye shots, we have a tooltip of 144,000. Let's go ahead and put in a map. I want to put in a boss so I can kind of show you, but no, I'll just put in a white boss. All right. Well, we got offers. What do we got offers on? Price question mark. After this boss, I will go over the explanation on why I chose the gems I chose. I think I've explained it in other videos, but just so you can kind of uh, know how I scale my damage and why scaling my damage the way I do makes it so I can do the content I want to do.
All right. Kill all the ads first. As you can see, we're already doing respectable damage to the Phoenix. We are only applying our one curse to him and he's still getting melted down. And that is Phoenix. Huh, he dropped me an Elder Guardian. <coughs> now that I showed you what it looks like without the Ensnaring Arrow as a single target, I actually forgot to skill my Ensnaring Arrow. Let me do that real quick. That's the wrong thing. There we go. What you can do is you can actually take Ensnaring Arrow, put it right here, and now your ensnaring arrow is going to apply your hex. And let's, <coughs> for the sake of it, let's go ahead and pull out another guardian map. I will pull out the same boss with the same difficulty so you can kind of see the difference in damage with your single target. Obviously, if the boss has more health, that boss takes a little bit longer to kill, and you have to be a little bit better at your, you know, playing. But, I usually don't have to worry about it. <coughs> Alright. So yeah, this is a longer video to give you a from ground a ground up view and a uh, idea of what it's like to build this I shot build. Uh, as, as I said, after this, I will explain my choices on why I chose the things I chose. So this time we'll have three curses on him and you can see how much faster he dies. Ow, I didn't dash in time. But as you saw his health his health die uh, goes down really really fast with our MF build. We don't have anything too crazy on. Everything in our build is extremely budget. There's absolutely no reason you shouldn't be able to pull off damage like this if you're using your MF build. It's all about how I scale my damage and how I manage to kind of stack all the more multipliers with each other. There we go. Oh, nice. We got a forgotten... Oh, it's the distant memory one? Okay. Let's see what our crew chopper is. Wow. Okay. Let's go over why I chose the skills I chose, one by one, and just uh, so you can kind of, you know, get a outlook on it. First and foremost, Ice Shot is the best single target that I found for Ice Shot itself. Uh, basically, using two six-link Ice Shots gives you the opportunity to scale only one of the gems damage. If you know about Barrage, Barrage has the uh, effect modifier of added. Effectiveness of added damage is about 48% instead of Ice Shot, which Ice Shot has effectiveness of added damage at 172%. So Ice Shot with Awakened Added Cold is just insane damage no matter what you do to it. 
Now on top of it, we are using a Hiri's Ire, so we have a lot of effective, effective added damage there. And Hiri's Ire is relatively inexpensive throughout the leagues. Early league, it may be a little harder and more expensive to acquire, but you shouldn't be gearing up an MF character as your first character, in my opinion. Maybe a Toxic Rain and then build an MF character. Now you will be able to do pretty much any content you can think of uh, with this build, aside from the the uh, major bossing content because you're not going to kill them fast enough and even if you do play well things get out of hand real quick. Um, I can do Maven on Ice Shot but it's uh, not this one. This one would probably take me a while and a lot of practice. It would just take too much damage. Our Hiri's Demise has point blank allocated but it, that doesn't really matter. I actually still have point oh I don't have point blank imagery but I had point blank imagery. And for our tree, our tree is standard ice shot. We have uh, we have it built the way we usually do, where we path up and scroll all the way down, so we can get the most out of the split personalities at the bottom there via two um, of our jewels. Now, if you don't want to use a voices because voices even uh, seven passes is too expensive, you feel like you can you can uh, get away with other cluster jewels. You're more than welcome to. I use this as an example just so I can add a little bit of extra crit and crit multi. That way I can get more damage quicker and not like suffer. Our health is only 2600. Our reses aren't fully capped but you can cap them via the clusters. Literally the easiest thing you can do is if you get a 8 passive cold, look for prismatic heart. Prismatic heart will literally cap me. Um, <clears throat> the crit clusters are also just the first thing I found in my stash just to kind of give you a rundown of how easy it is to do this. Crits also a little more common right now. You can also get a non-damaging ailment cluster with cold conduction, but that cluster currently is very expensive due to the self-chill build. We are taking as much crit chance and crit uh, multi as we can so we can scale our damage as high as possible. We have this taken so we can actually hold our, you know, pick up our items or use our items. We have this for more life. We have the typical inspired learning setups right here and right here. And this we have open not only for this jewel slot, but because if you decide you want to flex in another cluster jewel, you are more than welcome to. Whether it be a non-damaging element with cold conduction, whether it be a crit, whether it be a projectile damage, there is literally... 10 to 15 different cluster jewels you can use. I've actually been using um, the non-damaging elements in League and I, in last League, instead of using any, any of these, I used AoE jewels and my goal was to overlap as many area of effect, uh, as many eye shots with each other. Basically when I would hit an enemy with five arrow, enemies with five arrows, all five arrows would overlap each other's area of effect enough to where they all, they would all damage the same enemy, deleting them instantly. <clears throat> and our skills are pretty much chosen as a cookie cutter for us specifically. We are using the Azanath chant to cast Sniper Mark, Hydrosphere, Blood Rage, and we have it in power just because we can. But uh, the this this gem slot is a flex slot. A lot of times, what I do is I'll put Coaling Strike in to make it so bosses die quicker. Uh, this time I just found it and put it in just because it had the red socket. I didn't want to recolor. Our uh, Sniper's Mark, Hydrosphere, and Blood Rage are chosen because Blood Rage gives you your frenzies during your mapping and it gives you attack speed during bossing, so it's a, a two prong attack kind of thing along with the life leech it gives you. Our Sniper's Mark says. Cursed enemies take 42% increased damage from projectile hits, which uh, translates to. They, they, uh, you deal 42% more damage to enemies that you hit with your projectiles. A Hydrosphere says deal, it deals a huge amount of flat damage with scales when you convert it and everything like that. Our Hydrosphere isn't fully leveled here. This is just one we had in our stash and threw on here. And then obviously you have the whole 100% fizz converted to cold while, while uh, it has no elements. 100% fizz converted to lightning while it, uh, shot, or while it is shocked and converted to cold while it is frozen or brittle. So basically if you convert it to cold, all the cold scales via your tree and added cold and everything like that, all of that, all of that scales really well with Hydrosphere. 
On top of it, Hydrosphere basically gives you a, um, a, a hittable um, non-enemy object behind the enemy. That's how you scale your damage so high. What I, what I do basically is because it's in my chant, I point at the boss. And when I point at the boss, the Hydrosphere is usually placed right in front or right behind. Most of the time it's right behind. And I have Chain, so what will happen is if it's right in front, it will hit the initial uh, Hydrosphere, dealing damage to the boss because it's still hitting something, and then it'll chain and hit the boss. And basically shotgunning the boss with one, one arrow. And when you have Barrage support, you're shotgunning the boss with five or six arrows. So it's like hitting a whole bunch of times. On top of which, it also has its own damage that it hits it with. We have our Awaken Hex Touch setup with our standard Ellie Weakness Frostbite because this gives you an insane amount of more damage, basically. And then you can uh, switch it up. You can either use its Snaring Arrow <coughs> for a single target. As you saw, I was able to quickly dispatch that boss. Or you can use a uh, Herald of Ice for clear, and that will basically allow you to clear packs extremely easy. We have our standard Dash Second Wind setup. And our Herald of Ice Precision. They're divergent just because I don't I don't really have a reason why I have their as alt quality. They just there. <coughs> and our tamings are there to basically give you a budget option and to cap all your resistances. And the belt. <coughs> Excuse me. The belt I have put here because obviously we don't have a lot of movement speed. This gives us a little bit of extra movement speed on top of giving us a lot of attack speed and cast speed and giving us regen. The Harbinger itself gives you action speed every couple seconds. And, well, the Hero's Demise is pretty self-explanatory. Um, honestly, the Hero's Demise gives you cold, lightning, and fire damage. And when you crit, you apply each one of these ailments. And when you apply these ailments, your taming then does that much more damage up to 120% increased damage from hits and ailments for a free shock and ignite on enemy. And it adds up real quick as you saw like I basically was able to delete maps and kill a hydra or a, was it a hydra well, phoenix boss twice real easy with an MF build. <clears throat> and so you can kind of make sure I am a weakener 9 and I have very 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 full map completion 165 164 on my atlas so I do not need to worry about uh, you know the boss not being strong enough or whatever the boss was as tough as it can get aside from being out I didn't want to take too long to kill the boss have it have elemental equilibrium or anything like that I just decided to uh, throw this on and show you what my MF eye shot can do and why I like to play it sometimes. I like I like to play it, the reason why I don't like to play it a lot is because I have four full build eye shot builds in standard. I had five. I think I have had, yeah, I have five. And all of this is just because they drop down from league to league to league. So I will say that there's um there is a uh, nuance to being able to use the flasks I use, or to be able to use this, uh, the character the way I use it, and um, a lot of the choices for the flasks I use, um, basically I, I just want a little bit of movement speed and freeze immunity, I want attack speed via here, uh, bottled faith is obvious, uh, we don't even have a good rolled one, we just threw it on, dying sun is obvious, because two projectiles, um, and then our life flask is, isn't even a bubbling it's just a random life class that we put on so so you can kind of get an idea of you know how easy this character is to put together and go over the tree one last time we're level 95 we have killed all bandits I'll zoom in Zoom out. All right, and that's that. That is my magic find eye shot build that is able to do pretty much all content. Well, I do appreciate the way everyone is interested in my builds. I am sorry it took me so long to get to this. I I literally had to pick things out of like seven different stashes, and every time I take apart a build, I have to put it back into those stashes so I can find them easy. I am in standard, so I have a massive 
massive collection of stuff. So, well, without further ado, this has been Chaos Rain. I do appreciate everyone joining me and um, subscribing and uh, requesting videos and everything like that. I will get back to my norm, my regular scheduled programming or my normal schedule of posting my my uh, league I shot builds, along with posting farming methods that I both um, uh, that I've both discovered, come up with, and or and or use just because I need the currency or whatever reason. And I will be glad to kind of give you guys a rundown of my choices in Wolf, in Standard, and in League. I will also show you um, basically how lucrative and profitable my farming methods are in League. So you can kind of make a decision for yourself to try and get as much currency as possible. However you want to. Now I have multiple ways to sustain my currency farm, I have multiple ways to just gain a whole bunch of currency, however a lot of it, a lot of it is on me and if I really really decide to do X, Y, and Z. So all I can say to you is that if you decide to follow my guides and um, you decide to take a look at how to farm X, Y, and Z, please be aware that I have given a ground up view of what it's like from A, P, C, and D and you can choose at whatever point that you feel you're comfortable with to follow it and from there that should basically get you to whatever goal you need to get to. Thank you so much for watching. This has been Chaos Rain and as always you guys take it easy.